sheet pan pizza, thick, chewy, cheesy pepperoni sausage, everything you want. This will make you and a lot of people really happy. This is pretty easy. You can use a store-bought crust, but I think when you know how to make your own crust and you know how easy it is, you should do that. That being said, you want to use your own, fuck it, use your own. The point is that you get to the end with this thing made by you not having ordered it. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I don't want restaurants thinking that we're trying to put them out of business. We're not. I'm a restaurant owner. I do think you should be in charge of your own food life. Right? Right. Amen to that. Thank you. I need a big choir behind me every so often with one like really vibrant, strong amen when I make an important point. That's not egotistical, is it? As most confident people do. <laughs> All right. Here's what we start with. We start uh, with yeast. This is regular yeast. There's two types. There's the regular everyday uh, 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 Excuse me and allow me to get the proper yeast. As I was saying, there's two types of yeast. One is a fast acting rapid yeast. It's not what we're using today. We're using regular everyday active dry yeast. So two packages of this, they're each and out. What are these? I don't know how big these are. These are a quarter of an ounce. Each packet's a quarter of an ounce. This is standard. You don't have to go looking for this size. This is pretty much the only way it comes in packets. And most recipes will, will, will specify a packet or two packets like this. You can also get like a jar of it. That's for some serious baking. Okay. Put these in our, in our stand mixer. One. And two. About a tablespoon granulated sugar. I know that looked like a lot. It always looks like a lot coming out of that, but that's what it is. And then two cups of warm water. And warm water is between about 110 and 120 degrees. Too hot and it will kill the yeast and you don't want to do that. You can now just let this sit for 10 minutes. The yeast will bloom. What that means is that the yeast will eat the sugar, sugar's food for it, and it will start to get frothy and foamy on top. So, 10 minutes. I could just stand here and stare at you, but it's probably not a good idea. And after 10 minutes, that's what you've got. Foamy, bubbly, perfect. And the smell of yeast fills the air. And so now we want to add to the foamy yeast the following. Five cups of all-purpose flour, it's regular everyday flour, tablespoon of garlic powder, like that, tablespoon of salt, like that, and a small handful of oregano. We'll add the dough hook, put it down, and start to mix. And once everything's incorporated, we'll add about a quarter cup of olive oil. Let it go for another two or three minutes. And when it looks like that, it's done and we stop. Baking sheet time. Remember, one sheet pizza, baking sheet. We're gonna put some olive oil on it, get it nice and greased up. Spread this all over the bottom. On the sides. Look at the smell of olive oil is really lovely. Now it's time for our dough. So we grab the dough, we plop it right on to the baking sheet. Plop like that. And now we spread it out. So it's still fairly elastic. So take your time. We want to go end to end and wall to wall. And the olive oil on the bottom is going to help make this happen. Don't rush it. Have you voted for us for the Shorty Awards yet? Have you voted for us every single day? Well, you can't vote, you every, can vote day. every day. I voted every day. Wait, that's illegal. I'll have to cut that out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so now this is going to rise. 
So if you don't exactly make the edges everywhere, you're going to be okay because it's going to grow. But you can see what you're getting. And you can also see the flex in here. I can smell the garlic right here. The oregano is making a difference. This is all good. You could put red pepper flake in here, anything you wanted. So spread as evenly as you can. Before we put the toppings on, you're going to have another chance to make it as nice as you want. But for now, if you get this much coverage, you're going to be in great shape. Next up, we want to cover it with, what do you call this, saran? Saran. We want to cover this with saran. Except, I hate this blade on the edge. It's the worst product ever. Why have they not figured out a better fucking way? No idea, man. But also this, this fucking edge. Worse. Covered up. We're going to take it, we're going to put it where it's generally warmer than it is out here. So inside, by the stove, for about 45 minutes. In that 45 minutes, it's going to rise. It's going to do all the things that pizza dough is supposed to do. While that's happening, we can, we can prep our toppings for it, which is perfect. But before we do, I would like to take this moment to apologize to Max. Something happened a few minutes ago. It wasn't caught on camera. I wish it was. We had a little bit of an argument, and I feel like I owe him an apology. Do you accept my apology? I do, yes. Good. Do you accept my apology? I don't know that they could hear that. Say that louder. <laughs> Do you accept my apology, Dick? I do accept your apology. See, this is what it is to be adults. We can both recognize when we were wrong. And we were both a little wrong. Yes. One of us more wrong than the other. And I'm not going to say who that was. But we're beyond it now. You can't work together in close quarters without stuff happening. The key is don't let it go on too long, though. That's a problem. Three things to prep in anticipation of our dough being ready. And we're very close. First up, we need a bunch of garlic squeezed into a bowl. And that's gonna look like this. Three big cloves. One, two, and three. And the reason we want the garlic is because we're gonna make a little garlic chili oil using some chili oil. Roasted chili oil. Look how gorgeous that is. And this we're going to brush on the crust before we put anything else on. That's going to do some great things for this. Next, mushrooms. We're going to use cremini mushrooms. We take out the stem like this. And we don't want too many mushrooms. Why, Max? Because There's you said we don't want too many mushrooms. Max said not too many mushrooms. He also said no to fresh tomato and to green pepper because apparently that's some weird foreign fucking thing that nobody would ever put on a pizza people are out there going yeah good call max i don't think anybody's saying good call all right well i guess we got our fucking poll today Fuck max, uh, i put tomato on every single fucking pizza i have always oh you can hear him mumbling away behind the camera this is our poll should we have put tomato and green pepper on this pizza yay or nay it's that simple. A yay is a vote for me, a nay is a vote for the biatch behind the camera. You can vote against him just because he's your favorite you can. YouTuber. You can vote against me. I'm completely fine with that. Food's going to suck for the rest of our channel days, but it's up to you. No, that's not fair. I'm only kidding. Vote with your heart. Sorry, your stomach. Vote with your stomach. Tomato, green pepper. Yes, no. Finish the mushrooms. And even though I'm cutting this one here, Max, I'm not saying we're going to put them all on. I just want them at the ready. So let's put these on this plate in anticipation, in preparation, and now some fresh mozzarella. It is true. Like if you're ordering pizza with a bunch of 18 to 34 year old guys, it's not like they're going to be like, oh, make sure you put tomatoes in. <laughs> because they don't know what's good. Because they're stupid. And they're just going from playing Fortnite and jerking off to Yo, having Chad. pizza. Yo, Chad, make sure they add a bunch of fresh tomato on that pizza before we go out tonight. God, just because you guys don't like it. Fucking douches. 
I want sausage, pepperoni, and fresh tomato. So now a little bowl of fresh mozzarella. Is this okay or is this not good for your age group? You guys, can you handle fresh mozzarella? We can handle it. I don't think you can. So, like this. We'll cut this guy and then fairly thin. These guys are just going to get scattered across the top. Okay, we're set. I think we've got everything we need. Let me get the, uh, the dough and we're off to the races. And by the way, fresh mozzarella is amazing. You ever had it, little boy? And here we go. Look, see what I said? Like it filled itself in. So let's, this is sort of, make sure it's flat the way we want it. Nice. Take the saran off. And there we go. Ah, smell that. Ah, oh, yum. I love the smell of yeast and garlic and oregano. So here's what I do. I like to make holes in here. I feel like some of the ingredients, namely, namely the garlic chili oil that we're about to put on seeps in. The sauce will seep in. But also, I think it keeps it from getting too, too big. So, it's a favorite little move. And whether it works or not, for me, it's, it's, very, it's very relaxing. Okay, first up, this chili oil that smells ridiculous. Just a store-bought bottle of chili oil with this garlic and we paint. Spread the garlic out. Oh, yum. No bad is coming to us here, is it, Max? No. See, I think that the garlic now and the oil now get down inside this and they start to do some beautiful things. I'll sort of try and keep the traditional edge free of ingredients. Free of toppings, I mean. Perfect. Next up, our sauce. You know, I'm a fan of making my own sauce. We've shown you how to make a really good marinara with about 10 ingredients. We showed you in the spaghetti and meatball episode how to take whole peeled San Marzano tomatoes and add only a couple of things to make a really delicious sauce. Today, we're using crushed tomatoes only on top of this. Look, we're getting flavor from everywhere else. This is a very quick, easy way to do this. Cool? So, we open the can up, take off the lid, and here's what you have inside. Look at it. Gorgeous, right? It's a beautiful kind of puree. So, on we go. A few of these. Not too many, even. Watch. We're trying to add some flavor. We're not trying to kill anything else by putting so much tomato on that you can't taste anything else. So I may have used, I don't know, a quarter of a cup, maybe maybe a third of a cup, and I don't really think I need any more than that. Next, Maxi, some shredded mozzarella cheese. And again, I don't really want to just decimate it with cheese. There's moments when I want lots of cheese, and this is, this is not. I have two other cheeses to go on, so I don't need to kill it on this one. Next, we're gonna go mushrooms. And remember, Max, you don't want a lot, right? So few that you might not even see them in the JPEG. Is that the goal? Now the mozzarella. Now, the beautiful pepperoni. Is this coverage gonna be good or do you want more? Here? Yes. Next up is sausage and here's what I'm using. Spicy. Italian sausage that we're gonna put watch like in little tiny bits like this Like just little tiny dots of it Oh my god Do you know how good this is gonna be the sausage right now smells just so good just so good Last but not least some good Parmesan grated over the top not bag Parmesan some nice Parmesan. And I wanted to put some fresh basil leaves on here. 
but the little kids couldn't handle it. I don't know if it needs it, Dad. We don't like vegetables. And there we go. That's it. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. It's sparse. It's missing a ton of things that would make it super delicious. But it's our sheet pan pizza. And it's going into a 500 degree oven until it's done. It's probably going to be 25, 30 minutes. And here we are. Oh, snap. Look at that gorgeousness. Look. Puffy. Uh, the little bowls of sausage. The scattering of mushrooms. There could be so much more on this pizza. But it's beautiful. It is. I believe this is a case of less is more. Or less is lacking. Maybe that's it. Should we take it off? You want to see underneath? Beautiful. All right, here you go. Oh my gosh. One sheet pan. One pizza. Mamma mia. Let's just cut right here. We'll go right down the middle, shall we? Beautiful. Doughy. Oh, it's going to be exactly everything I want it to be. Come on. Again. Look at this. Snap. Let's have a bite. I want to give it two things. One, a little fresh ground pepper. It's my personal favorite, like this. And I'm going to give it just another tiny drizzle of this chili oil. Uh-oh, too much. It's all right. Have it drip there. Benefit that guy. And now a bite. Look, it's glistening. It's gooey. It's, it's almost everything that you want in a pizza with the exception of green peppers and tomato and fresh basil. What can you do, right? You can have a bite, that's what you can do. Uh-uh. All right. You get the garlic that we put with the chili oil on the crust the oregano, look, a little bite of sausage and pepperoni. It's chewy as promised. It's the right amount of cheesy. You know, sometimes pizzas are way too cheesy, overly cheesy. That's possible. This is not. The fresh mozzarella Mm. I'm going to tell you something. I hate to say this because I could be proving that boy behind the camera right. But this is... This is phone. Somebody's phone. I'm about to make an important emotional statement about this pizza and his phone went off. This is about as perfect the pizzas I've had. If you like a thickish crust in a sheet pan. You know what this is missing? Our two Kiwi friends, Jackson and Lukey, that won the contest that were here yesterday when we shot. Guests of Sam the Cooking Guy, like Lukey and Jackson, stay at the Carte Hotel in downtown San Diego, steps away from Not Not Tacos. They're out discovering San Diego, as they should be. But we loved having them here. Suckers, though, they didn't get to eat this. Thanks for being here. Make this for sure. Damn it. Oh, wait. Look. I just happened to have some tomatoes that I cooked in the oven. And... Just happened to have. And... And a piece of basil. Look at that. I wonder how this bite's going to be. Oh yeah, now it's like a salad on a pizza. That's way more visually appealing. The best pizza salad ever. Oh, fuck.